Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining my channel with me today. Um, today I got the hoodie on and I would be wearing a ski mask because what I'm going to show you <laughs> is probably illegal. And I mean that jokingly. But today I'm going to be talking about a new set of plugins that are definitely going to offer a lot of clarity and insight um, for a lot of producers who may have issues when it comes to music theory or coming up with original scratch composed beats and this is a, a very very big deal a way bigger deal than most people appreciate i spent the greater of my whole producer life basically from the beginning of the 2000s to now to kind of understand hack reverse engineer more importantly contextualize what was happening in popular music and now today contextualizing what's happening in the music of yesterday which is probably more important um, but a lot of our tools have been kind of incomplete. Um, so the tool I'm going to show you today is is not incomplete at all. In fact, it's probably one of the most most complete that I've seen in its current incarnation. And hopefully that sets the tempo for the future as far as our DAWs, our workflows, and just the betterment of music. Because, you know, for a long time, people's low-key complaint has been music doesn't sound good. Um, and in technically so, in a technical way, we can understand why. There is no musicality in a lot of stuff. So hopefully I can impart some of these tools to you to really help you step your game up. Um, but let's, let's get started. Let me show you why I'm doing this video and the premise of it. So this is the homie DJ Chosen One. He's very dope. Um, he had this project, he was doing like a beat a day, and I was listening to all of them. But anyway, he left the comment. He said, wow. This has to be the dopest VST I've seen for people trying to piece together music theory. They've laid out everything in one interface out of the many times you explained the circle of fifths chart. I believe I finally understand it now. Thanks for keeping going back at it. I think you should do more scalar videos, not just how to, but actually applying it to creating songs. It seems there are many techniques and variations of what this can do. So that's a response to my previous music theory video using scalar, which is a beast in its own right. But I want to show you something else that would either complement that for you or just put you on a different planet. And that is Captain. <laughs> now, Captain has been recommended to me before. I think ever since Black Friday, right? I think I heard Odessi first. Then people were talking about Captain. Then when I started doing the scalar stuff, more Captain, more Captain, more Captain. I was like, all right, it's time to go. Um, and I... <laughs> when I saw the videos, I understood it, you know, intellectually, but I didn't, I, I still can't believe it. I, I still can't believe it. And I, I'm going to try to do my best to show you a good demonstration of it. But basically, it's currently three plugins. They're adding a couple more, I think at least three more. So it's going to be like this bundle <laughs> of, of hacks that, that should cure any problems you have in terms of beat, block, or composing. Um, and it's $79. Just keep that in mind. So let's jump into it. Um, so I'm using FL Studio Beta for Mac. Um, if this crashes, it's not them, it's the beta. So just understand that. I have three instances of the JV1080 open. I don't have any sounds assigned. This is from the Roland Cloud, of course. And the first thing I'm going to open is Captain Chords. And what's different about this, if you watch my previous video, or if you're looking at this kind of technology for the first time is that before you jump into the matrix, it allows you to pick a key and a scale. Currently they have two scales, minor and major, right? And then the key could be whatever you want. I'm gonna start with G minor just because. And then you can tell it not to show it again, but I prefer to start this way sometimes, especially if you have a feeling for what key Serato sample tells you, what key the singer's voice is in, or what key you like to rap to. Or if you're doing a remix and stuff, you'll know what key too. So I'm gonna hit go. And what it's done was it generated the first chord in G minor, which is the one, right? So you see across here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven keys in a given scale, meaning there's seven chords. However, most of the time, only six of them are very useful, right? So they color coded those. The majors in the scale are red. And then the one, four, five always talking about are blue. And in a minor scale, the two is diminished and a major scale, the seven would be diminished. 
So it lays that out all for you. And what you do from here is you start building chord progressions. And if you've seen the other websites I've shown you, like hooktheory.com, it'll give you the Roman numeral progressions for most popular songs. So that's a given. But this particular program, what I'm going to do different, instead of hacking someone else's song, I'm going to just come up with something original. And this is where this shines. They've given us a chord library of just fire, like just stuff that works. Or, you know, they and basically I, I was reading something on their website where they said like they analyzed the top hundred beat port and the top hundred Spotify playlist things. And it was like, yo, these are the common denominators. Right. Um, so it's very contemporary in that sense. So I'm just going to pick whatever. I don't know. Actually, I hate I hate this um, with me. I'm like, what if I choose the wrong one kind of feeling? So I'm going to pick this one. All right, so it turns around on the one, which is fine. So it has your chords laid out. And what happens is this program will sync to your host. So I drew these empty boxes here to make sure the FL pattern clip was long enough to keep up with those four chords. All right, so now what we do is start to flip it. And there's a few sections you could pay attention to. The first one on the left, of course, is the chords themselves, right? You got your key, you got your scale, you got the chord progression, you got the rhythm. So you can change the rhythm and it sounds more like this. So all kinds of rhythms. So that by itself makes it different than some of the other plugins I've seen or used or even the older ones that have come and gone <laughs> in this realm, right? And then you can set note length, of course, and that's completely up to you. And that's pretty much it. That gets you started if you're starting with one of their progressions in the given key. Um, the section under that it's just the sounds like what's dope about this is instead of having like a GM piano or generic piano sound, it actually has sounds like you can use just this and make pop records, right? Or R&B stuff. And then you can add your reverb, your delay. So a lot of people, if you stumble into this and you're, you know, you're looking at all these plugins and you're picking one over the other, or you're picking one first versus the other, just keep in mind this particular instrument comes with sounds. So depending on where you're coming from, I, I sense that a lot of sample based producers will be the most interested in this. So if you jump on this first, you also get a palette of sounds. I think it's a hundred of them, but they're all go to sounds, right? Like they're all the pop stuff. So it's really dope. And then of course you have VSC output where you could route it to your different instruments. In FL Studio, I use drag and drop, right? You click on this little icon and you drag it to, in my case, to JV1080. But what gets really crazy about this thing, now that that's all knocked out the way, is how you flip this, right? Because peep how this is a one, five, seven, one. Now you could keep it like that, or you could take that last one and do something different. So it's gonna highlight one for you automatically and give you the five variations. So I'm gonna try that. <laughs> it's not the most beautiful sounding thing, but you'll peep that is keeping it in the staircase. And you see this little, uh, the MIDI clip itself, it shows you everything's still interconnected. And that's different than a lot of things too, because a lot of plugins will give you the chords or the harmonies but you have one chord here, one chord there, one chord up there, and you would have to manually go into piano roll and um, reharmonize or re uh, do different inversions to get everything to do what this is doing. This does it automatically. So if I do choose that particular chord, then I could change it even more. So like the flavors are like your sevenths, your ninths and elevenths, you can change those on the fly. Complexity gives you more keys in that chord. So now you see the shape changes a little bit. <laughs> that chord is just not going to work with me. And I'm fine with it. Let's try that one. Let's try that spacing. I believe it was that tone here. Mm -hmm. 
that'll work with a, a different sound. But once you have your complexity and your flavors in order, you can then change how they move, which is crazy, the inversions, right? So if I go to the beginning and hit this first one and change it, all of them change because it dictates the flow. It's always trying to keep them connected and that is so important when you deal with voicing and stuff, but it's even more important when you look at the other two jokers that come with this. That sounds like an urgency or a panic, but I'm not really sweating that. I'm gonna keep it like that just so to keep the demonstration going. But once you're done with that, you can drag and drop it to the VST of your choice or route it, use it live, whatever's most efficient for your CPU usage. Now they have another section called pre-chorus where you could build another idea. They have another section called chorus where you can build another idea. And then they have another section called drop. You can build another idea. So you can experiment with what I've been talking about in previous video, like making bridges just by jumping between these. And that's super useful because they even have like a play mode, which I believe will probably help a lot with that as well. When you use your QWERTY keyboard, like if you're on a laptop or something. But for me and mine, for the bulk majority of the things I have issues with or, you know, time consuming tasks, I just need this this one view. I need to know what scale I'm in. I gotta make sure I'm in key and I just got to go for the gusto. Right. I need an idea and you can keep playing with these rhythms, man. Like there's a lot of stuff to transform the way this feels, even if you're using the same chords over and over again. Just changing the rhythm, the note length, and the inversions and the complexity of everybody is crazy. Like, a matter of fact, let me put these all on five so we can get that bottom note. That fixed it, didn't it? Beautiful, bro. Like, there's no hype, no hype beasting. So you take and you drag and drop that on top of one of your VSTs if you're using FL Studio, if you're in like an Ableton, because I think this particular plugin was crafted with Ableton and Logic in mind. You just drag it into your uh, your lane for your instrument. Same thing with Reason. So I'm gonna save this real quick, just in case things get kind of hairy. And I'm gonna play it. When you minimize it, it doesn't play anymore. It'll just play what's uh, your VSTs in your project. Yeah, we're almost there. So <laughs> let me get something else. These are all my guitars. So let me get keyboards or piano. Even better. What about just synth or pad or anything really? So that's magical. Um, it's really simple. And then when you go into piano roll, you can see it. And like I show a lot of people with FL Studio with the ghost channels, you can then go behind this on a different channel and trace out your bass lines or your 808s, trace out your melodies, etc. And that's how we would use Melodyne when we do the MIDI export. That's how we would use Scalar when we commit certain chord progressions. This, however, said so forget all of that. You don't, you don't need to do that much with us. So now I'm gonna go to the Captain Melody. <laughs> and this was the one, this, <laughs> whoa. I can't even show you all the hacks and secrets that this is capable of. But I'm gonna show you what it's capable of, but there's a lot going on here that don't make no sense. So I believe these are all VST3 or better. So they all talk to each other, which is very useful. And I'm very impressed that the FL beta allowed it. So basically you open up Captain Melody after you have your chord progression and then hit connect. It's gonna speak in mirror, I guess, you know, get the information about the chords from Captain Chords and then start making melodies according to that. So now when I play it, it 
<laughs> and it's done. Like for, for me, it's done because then I can trace the rest of it. I can subtract stuff and edit it in piano roll. I'm good to go. But the way it does that is very interesting, right? So you do the note length and everything like we've seen in all the other programs. And you could demo one of their sounds if you want. Like a, we need a lead for this, I believe. They have plucky leads. Do they have just like a... There's no sustained sounds here. But it's okay. I, I might not even need it for that. Let me try this. A saw sound. Yeah. And turn that instrument down. And this way, you get closer to the texture of what you would map to the rest of your song. That I'm going to change and pick a different sound altogether, but it's cool to have that option. Like, it's not always a piano sound doing melody. Because, you know, melodies and especially with exotic stuff, you don't realize it or resonate with it un unless the preset or texture is correct. Like, if you're just doing melodies on piano, it's not the same as if you did it, like, on a Omnisphere lead patch, right? Two different worlds. So I appreciate that they give us the option to change and manipulate stuff so you can use a standalone, but also just to help your ears say, all right, that's gonna be a good pattern because that's a good sound. And now I know what to do with that. I know what that sound is and I know I can go to my access virus and do it with those sounds or I can go to Omnisphere and do it with those sounds. So the tension is probably the most important part and this is the part a lot of people who don't understand music theory don't understand. And I'm one of the first ones to sign up for that. Tension. So what happened is you can do it in scale, which all these will be in the key of your scale, which in our case was what, G minor? And most of the time, people who use mouse create that way. They'll look at the scale highlight and draw in scale and try to catch fire. And that's it or miss. As we can hear here, it's kind of like, eh, technically it works, especially up here, but down here it's kind of like, maybe. And given you can edit all this once you drag and drop it and do what you want. But that's how most people think, you know, melodies come from scale. And then it'll do chord notes only, meaning it'll only put a melody in place of where your chords are, which is the next level up, especially for me. Once I figured out, I can just trace my chords. Like when I make arps and stuff with FL Arp Maker, it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. The pad matches the arp or the melody. So everything's tonic, right? And then you trace the bottom with the bass and you're good to go. So that by itself is such a crazy time saver because you don't have to trace that. You just go through chord notes only, go through the different rhythms, which it has plenty. Like I don't even wanna change that, right? That's fire. But that's usually what people do. The tension harmony is crazy because harmony is like, it doesn't necessarily have to fall on the chord. It could be anywhere in the scale, but the relationship to the chords are in such a way that for me, it, I, I'm gonna use the word advanced. It's a more advanced sounding melody. I guess that might not be the correct lexicon for what this is doing, but I feel like in harmony tension is more advanced. Your ears appreciate it differently. Like in chord, you can't go wrong. In scale, you really can't go wrong. It just might not jive with different changes. But in harmony is just, uh. So the one I may not like is this one right here, but that's fine. I can go here and just drop it down once I'm in piano roll. It's a crazy thing, man. And like I said, there's enough rhythm and patterns here to just, it's just a ridiculous thing. It really is. It's, it's ridiculous. And then of course, lastly, you got the uh, pattern, which then gives you even more options based on the rhythm, which is,
and you notice like these different patterns work better for harmony and then the other earlier patterns work better for in chord so you'll you'll figure you'll hear it like it's one of those things where like you're going to be playing it by ear and realize like i did last night there's certain <laughs> like i said there's a lot of hacks to show you but there's certain ones that work better right there's some that work better in chord and then there's some that work better in harmony and i think that's dope i really do i really think this is ridiculous like it's too much almost like it's almost too much and it has all the art patterns and if you see me use fl piano roll you know they have their presets are like eight trance gates maybe less it's like 43 here So I can have fun with this all day. Let me just use something practical. Let me get a more busier situation. Cool, and then drag that into the matrix. And then once you have that here, you can see the chords that are overlays. I'm gonna delete this time signature marker. I'm gonna go to helpers, scale highlight, I'm gonna choose G minor, and all these keys are gonna land in a white highlighted region because everybody's in scale, even my chords. So you can then freely move these notes around and go, well, I don't like that here. It might sound better here. And see how like that generator put it there, although logically, if you do it by chord, you'd be like every other key, every other key, every other key. But it works better there. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Like you wouldn't detect that naturally or it'll just take you time, right? Trying to figure out which one of these would do it for you. Whereas this one says that one works. And then of course you could build from that. Like you could lead into it. It's a starting point. It ain't the finished melody, and I think a lot of people may, may misinterpret what that program's doing. It creates melodies, yes, but if you have something that's powerful, like this view, the ghost channels, you just keep going. Like, <laughs> it's a different world. Let me just do my due diligence and at least try to pick a different sound. Um, softly. Let's save it real quick. I get that feeling that something wants to crash. So that's that. And then last but not least, uh, we got Captain Bass or Captain Deep as they call him. Same principle as Melody, but for bass. And this one, if you're a trap producer, if you're a hip hop producer composing chords around your sample chops or lo-fi, and let's say uh, intellectually, because I, I know my wider demographic is like Serato sample users and people who sample, if you can analyze the sample and do things like Melodyne and new tone and find out the chords or the root notes. And then you find out what key that is. So you'd feed Captain chord the key, and then you feed it the chords that match those root notes or match those chords. If you do the homework and figure it out, right? Of your core sample of what you're looping or chopping, even after you chop it. If you can translate those chops and those moments to chord progressions in the other plugin, then what you could do here is come and make bass lines and not use captain chords or the chords at all. 
You just use it to put the baseline in place. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to hit connect. Like the, like the others, this has a lot of bass sounds you can use, a lot of kick bass, you know, give you that 808, side bass, all kinds of things you would want if you don't have things yet. It already has it, right? So I'm going to try this 808 sound, although we might not hear it on most platforms because of video, but... It's good in theory, but for this example, we'll use something else. There we go. Crazy. So octave, of course, is where it is in relation to the rest of the music. Um, the shape is very important. Follow the chords is what most people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's tonic. It sounds beautiful. After you click that, drag and drop, <laughs> or... Um, go with the different rhythms, right? Right? But, check out these other modes, opposite movement. And what this is good for, um, like opposite movement, how this key went up, and it's kind of like, eh giving you that kind of feeling you can do that to add variation like you can look at follow the chords f and then opposite movement a and then when you go into the piano roll instead of having a two bar loop make it a four bar loop and alternate between them right or you can use this verse pre-chorus chorus layout and do the same thing have them with two different uh shapes so it gives you way more than it looks it makes your music way more interesting if you Start utilizing the different things together. Um, minimum adjustment necessary. So that's very similar to the leap function that the chords had. And it's really dope because there's only four of them. And they all work. And that's how most people do 808s, right? Just the same key. So minimum adjustments, flavor, and then of course you have different rhythms. That worked good for 808s. So what I'm going to do is do follow the chords real quick because I want to show you something. The world is yours. The fact that that complements everything is crazy to me. So I'm close that now. I want to save this. Go into the JV. Um, pick a different sound, a bass, of course. Synth bass, maybe. Let's get it. So with the bass, we can look at it, and it's already at the bottom. So, but you can do this and go to octave, and then see where it placed it, right? You can see that it's literally following the chords in the proper way as well. So it takes out all the guesswork, especially if you're programming 808s. You know where your down notes should go. And that's only with a four chord progression. So this sounds more like house and pop and EDM. But if you chop up your chords, because the program will let you split chords, and you do the same chord rhythms as a trap beat, then your 808s and your basses will follow those chords as well. And it'll be, it'll be more realized for you if you're used to tuning your ear to an urban way of placing bass and chords. So that's fine. Like I said, there's way more that it does than I can show you in one video. But what I really was interested in is the fact that we have scale highlight paired with this now. So it's easy to walk your chords and your bass notes down. It's a ridiculous thing. And 
that's coming back to the one because we used the one and one to begin it. So you could probably just run it back. Get as wild as you want and it's already there you just keep going like you want to do this the whole verse like you have the regular one for your verse but when you do your turnarounds or your change ups every eight bars or the last part of your hook you can copy and paste and make a different variation and this is nuts <laughs> oh man this is crazy. So once you have all that, let's load it on up. That's what people really want to do, right? <laughs> so let's select all, turn them up. Let's filter that bass out just a little bit. Let's half time it. then change the key of course so I'm gonna do it here cool and then double it up Cool, so it's off kilter a little bit. I didn't make the most perfect slices, but in this style of music, you don't need them. It's just, it's just what is that? Is what you want people to ask, right? You want people to be like, yo, what did you sample or what did you do here? Why does that sound so crazy? And because we're entering a time or a paradigm where people are more like, yo, uh, YouTube won't let us sample. They won't even let us do videos talking about samples, right? Uh, Spotify is hunting them down. SoundCloud is hunting them down. We're at a point in human creativity where we have to do this. Like you have to be on a point where you make your own samples and what have you. So these kind of programs, a lot of people who understand music theory and piano may not get what the hype is about when it comes to, why don't you guys just learn piano or, or why don't you just, you know, go through the classical training and spend that time really making and scratching your own stuff. And it's because most of us are not ultimately interested in playing piano. We want to make music, which is different. It's the same. They're cousins, but they're not the same. Um, people who take pride in the guitar and piano and multi-instrumentalists, they take pride in the performance, whereas a lot of people are wired in a way they take pride in the art. This is like playing Legos for us or Connects or uh, Tetris. Like It's a video game almost, except for it's a video game through your mind chambers of creativity. That's why it's much different than the people who can go, I can sight read and just play anything versus the people who go, I do this because I love it and it's fun, but I want it to sound better. I want a bigger impact. And there's a lot of loops and holes and gaps in my knowledge, but I need to tie it together because my end result is something way different than you guys over there. My end result here is that 
at the end of the day, I just need to make samples of flip. You know what I mean? Like there's a there's a lot there's a lot of common sense reasons to why this plugin is probably way more powerful um, for certain kind of people. It'll be unappreciated if you didn't have that kind of wiring in your brain. If you didn't appreciate why this is crazy, um, it's probably because you you probably could do it without it. You probably don't need this. You probably are better off just doing it the way you've been doing it. But I know my tribe a bit. Um, we're going to be killing it. So <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it real quick. And then once you have an idea you like, really, I can keep going. You can chop it up different. You can change the key different. But then I start thinking outside of the box of how I could transform that even further. So I'm going to route Serato here. And I'll probably use something like a... Uh, I have a lot of cool shaper tools for those sounds. I know I was losing y'all for a little bit. It always comes to light at the end. <laughs> no! <laughs> Why he do that for? <laughs> yo, yo, for real though, for real though, for real though. That's why <laughs> I say it don't matter. Like so many things don't matter, right? Like a lot of people get caught up in like the textures of yesterday. Like, yeah, get you a VST that's good enough. Assign some sounds. You, I didn't mix anything. I didn't send nothing to Neutron. I didn't send nothing to Lander, Harrison, none of that. I just put three random sounds together from the 80s. And then you keep processing, you keep chop chopping, you keep changing, repitching, and you keep affecting and processing. And out of that, uh, your tendency to com combine these things, you have your own sound. And um, getting to this point may took a little while because I'm being conscious of what I'm showing you. But... If you pair that with Captain plugin, you're gonna see how powerful it is because what I'm actually demonstrating is not why that's dope to make EDM and drops and R&B and those kind of styles of music. And I have nothing against that. This tool is perfect for people who've been sampling most of their life and wanna make their own samples. In a lot of cases, a lot of plugins we have require work, right? Like, I don't mind the work because I spent so many years doing it, whether it's Melodyne, whether it's the other plugins that are similar, whether it's, you know, MIDI notes and chopping and figuring out things by ear. That takes all day. Whereas with these three plugins and soon to be six because they're adding more, you can just keep coming up with samples like this, like that, like that. And that has a whole lot of implications when you think about it. But for a person who's a sample based producer trying to cross over, you can do it easily. And then, like I said, you filter everything, lo-fi everything, spectral layers everything. There's so many different levels to what this is allows us to do creatively. So then it gets out of that ballpark of robot, artificial, advanced system learning, and just stale and stagnant compositions. But then it turns on its head and goes, well, I'm going to do that, flip that and manipulate that and learn how to make that more articulate. But then I'm going to flip that even further and make it something else anyway. So you're not even, your ears don't have a chance to process that. The velocity curve of those chords. The, the human ear can't hear that in here. Right? And there's many other effects that are crazier than that. So I want you guys to think about that. I want you to, I, I hope I'm I properly conveyed why this is powerful. Not the obvious, right? It's never the obvious. But anyway, <laughs> I'm saying a whole lot without saying it. 
<laughs> but anyway, that is Captain Plugin. I'm MG the Future. I appreciate you guys for joining me today. Um, comments, questions, concerns, feedback, definitely leave it in the box below. Um, I'm probably just going to music theory it out for the rest of this week between this and Scalar. I'm thinking about comparing and contrasting Scalar with this plugin as well. So if you want to see that, let me know. Um, until next time, peace.